All right, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the community participation program meeting number two for the Birmingham Drive Complete Streets Project. Um, allow me to introduce myself and our panel for this evening. Um, I am Julie Ballesteros, and I'm an associate engineer and project manager with the city's engineering division of the Development Services Department. With me here tonight, Josh Stone, the design manager with Michael Baker International, our design consultant. Um, Mike Peltz, he's our landscape architect on the team. And we also have uh, folks from SDG&E's public affairs team. We have Megan Murphy, Kate Laredo, and Joe Galvezon. <clears throat> So first, we'd like to thank you in advance for your participation. Um, it is not the face-to-face -face meeting that we would normally the circumstances. It is the best that we can do at this time. Um, I'd like to start with a few housekeeping tips uh, regarding the Zoom webinar format. And this is especially for those of you who may not be familiar with webinars. Um, I will begin this presentation with um, with a short presentation. And then um, as you listen, you may formulate questions and then you can pose them to the panel by typing them in the chat feature or the Q&A feature that you may have on your screen. I will read the questions out loud and the panelists and I will respond to each question. Uh, due to our limited time, we ask that you keep the questions general in nature um, and not specific to any, any address at this time. Um, at the end of the presentation, I will leave my contact information on the display. And I ask that you please contact me directly for questions, again, related to specific addresses. And, and then I can schedule a meeting to discuss the details. I think that will be the best. Um, out of reactions on, um, this, on this uh, meeting. So I will go ahead and begin uh, the presentation um, and, um, and basically review what you see uh, on your screen, which are the main points of discussion uh, for today's meeting. So we will go through the project location again, the project goals, the history, uh, the main, main features of the project, our budget and our project schedule. Um, this is the map of our project location. Um, for the most part, the project is on Birmingham between and through Carroll View Drive. Um, it includes the design and construction of new sidewalk on both sides of Birmingham Drive um, over that segment. And improvements also include landscaping and a roundabout at Newcastle Avenue. Um, and Birmingham Drive. And the project will also include undergrounding of utilities um, and improve accessibility for pedestrians and, um, and, and improve the overall project aesthetics. Uh, design features will provide for uh, water recharge through landscape rain gardens. Uh, the project is approximately 2,500 feet It's a short component along San Alejo Avenue from Mozart Avenue to Birmingham Drive that consists solely uh, of, of a reclaimed water main installation. And that is shown um, in blue and dashed. <clears throat> All right, so this slide has uh, the four main goals of the project. Uh, number one and foremost is traffic calming and safety. This is addressed with the proposed Roundabout. We're looking at narrowing of travel lanes, um, full width pavement overlay, and the undergrounding of utilities. The second um, goal for the project is improved mobility. And we do this through the addition of new sidewalks on both sides, a designated bike lane in the eastbound direction, upgraded street lining, and uh, Americans with Disabilities Act compliant ramps and enhanced crossings. 
The number three goal is for stormwater treatment. And this project includes new a, a new new storage drains east of Navajo and incorporates low impact design features, again, such as rain gardens and a bioretention basin to treat runoff prior to discharge into the new storm drain system. And number four, we have reclaimed uh, water. Again, we are, the project proposes to install a new main along San Alejo and the, the length of Birmingham Drive. And the construction of this feature is funded by the San Alejo Joint Powers Authority and it's inclusion to the project at the time of construction. Now I'd like to review uh, the project history uh, for those of you who may be new to the area. Um, this project started uh, er as early as June of 2017. During that time, the city council awarded the design contract uh, to Michael Baker. Um, that same year in November, uh, the first public workshop or CPP uh, meeting was held. Um, at that time, comments that we received from this meeting were incorporated into the design as much as possible. The following year in September of 2018, City Council adopted the formation of the Underground Utility District number, 17, uh, number 18. And then most recently in February of this year, City Council Council and a contract with to complete the design and provide permitting services to obtain the coastal development and design review permits. This next slide is what I call an overall exhibit of the project. Um, this shows the limits of the work. Um, what you may see in green and then um, maybe, maybe a little bit difficult to see, uh, but there are various shades of green. Um, the green on the streets depicts the bike lane. The green adjacent to the sidewalks are the plants within the rain gardens and the bioretention basin. You can also see on this overall exhibit uh, the enhanced crossings. Uh, this next slide uh, is the typical cross section, and this. In this particular slide, this cross section um, is a 67 foot width um, of Birmingham Drive from Montgomery Avenue to San Alejo Avenue. Um, in Montgomery, the full width of the city's right of way actually varies from 50 to 55 feet. So it's almost um, a mirror reflection of the eastbound um, side of this this particular uh, slide. For the most part, uh, the work is within the existing right of way. There are encroachments, both um, hardscape and landscape uh, that will be affected as part of this project. Um, as much as possible, the design does accommodate many of the existing encroachments and preserves existing trees. Uh, we will be contacting property owners who do have um, encroachments shortly regarding um, real where absolutely necessary. Uh, we have a couple of locations towards the roundabout that the city is actually seeking easements um, on private property. And those property owners have already been notified with negotiations in progress. Uh, the existing travel lanes, as you can see, will be reduced from 15 feet to 14 feet on the westbound side and then um, from 15 to 10 feet on the eastbound side, but we do include the bike lane uh, with the green paint. Um, in addition, uh, upgraded street lights are included in the design and they are the single lamppost type. Uh, this next slide is a depiction of the plant palette that will be incorporated into the rain gardens and at the roundabout. Um, it consists of mostly native and drought tolerant species. Um, we, uh, our particular capture a portion of the stormwater runoff from the street and, um, 
and will allow for stormwater infiltration. Um, the bioretention basins will be uh, serving the same uh, purpose, but they will be treating the runoff before discharging to the new storm drain. This next slide is uh, the gateway sign. And a few, most of you may recognize the existing sign on your left. On your right is what the design is currently proposing. Um, it is a, a mosaic tile and it is um, five feet wide by six feet tall. And um, instead of on a post, it will be level with the, the ground. At this time, we are looking to relocate the sign. Um, it is currently uh, on private property. And what we'd like to do is relocate the sign to this location, which is on city's property, the um, fire station entrance. Um, this location, like I said, uh, eliminates the need to acquire um, an easement, which would add uh, further to the project budget. Uh, we are seeking input uh, with regards to this location. Uh, we are also seeking input with regards to the disposition of the existing sign. And if there is an interest in preserving that sign, um, that's, um, so we're hoping to get some community input with regards to that. Uh, this next slide is with is regarding uh, the sidewalk panels, also known as the. Uh, there are a total of 200 panels between McKinnon Avenue and Newcastle Avenue. Uh, the panels are in various conditions, as depicted here, um, many with cracks, um, which makes their preservation uh, very difficult. Uh, the panels have all been photo documented and cataloged. Um, and um, it is uh, notable that they are not ADA compliant um, and the, the, the plans at this time not to preserve them. Um, in the previous CPP meeting that was held back in uh, 2017, um, the city did not receive um, very many comments uh, regarding the disposition of the panels and so the plans um, currently indicate demolition. Um, but uh, we understand that it has been a few years since that meeting. And so the city would like input on um, um, if there is to do some form of preservation. Uh, for example, um, maybe allowing those who are interested in specific panels to, to make a cast of the panels prior to the start of construction um, is an idea that um, we've considered. Um, keeping in mind that we are um, very uh, closely monitoring the project budget. Um, so, um, you know, it's something to keep in mind if you've got ideas on, on how to preserve uh, the sidewalk panels. Uh, this is uh, the roundabout. Um, this is a three-legged over uh, oval roundabout, uh, very much different uh, than the typical four-legged circular roundabout that um, has been installed at, at various locations throughout the city. Um, the oval shape actually was the solution to minimize impacts uh, to adjacent properties while still allowing uh, the movement of traffic to work. Um, as is typical for most uh, roundabout design, the road narrows and encourages slower speeds uh, to navigate the roundabout. Uh, the roundabout has uh, a hardscape apron for the emergency vehicles um, and a tree is proposed at the center. Uh, this next slide is um, a map of the underground utility district limits. This was the map that was um, approved at city council in 
2018 of work with regards to the undergrounding of existing utilities and removal of poles. Uh, the design for the undergrounding was completed by SDG&E. This slide shows um, the contrast between uh, the street with poles and without poles. Obviously the street is not Birmingham, um, but um, it, it provides that um, sense of life and um, very much looking forward to something like this in the future. All right, so the budget for this project is um, just short of 10 million. We've got 9.8, as you can see. Uh, the breakdown for design as well as easement acquisitions um, and the construction phase is broken down on this slide. Um, it is important to note the construction phase a uh, construction contract, um, a contract for inspection, as well as the cost to SDG&E for the undergrounding um, uh, and the reclaimed water work, um, and as well as uh, support from our designers during construction. Uh, this next slide, um, is the project schedule and um, you had the first uh, workshop or um, CPP meeting back in November and this is our second one. The next step for this uh, project is to go to planning commission uh, next month. Um, we are also planning to complete the design um, in late June and um, uh, at this, uh, in this slide, it actually shows advertised for project um, in July, but nothing uh, and a grant. So we were recently informed that uh, the grant that we applied for, the ATP grant, uh, we did not receive that this year. <clears throat> um, we are also in the process of um, acquiring easements, as I mentioned previously. And um, there are also, uh, we will also be contacting uh, property owners about uh, driveway modica modifications um, and also about um, permissions to enter for SDG&E to enter the property to install uh, service connections to, home, to the homes. So some of that work um, is, 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 is starting and, and ongoing at this time. Um, but uh, until we can basically complete the negotiations for the easement um, and we receive funding, uh, we don't anticipate advertising this project for bid until that time. Be a, for a delay um, um, to the schedule. Um, there may be some questions about construction sequence, and I can elaborate a little bit about that. Uh, once construction starts, we anticipate um, construction phasing starting with uh, undergrounding of the uh, utilities, um, installation of the infrastructure, such as storm drains and the water. Um, then the next phase will include sidewalks and street lights, the rain gardens, um, the roundabout, um, and, um, and the curb ramps. And the last items would likely be uh, new pavement and striping of the crosswalks, the travel, and the bicycle lane. <clears throat> So that concludes uh, uh, the present. Um, this slide has my contact information. Um, please feel free to call me and email me. Um, what I've also provided on this slide is a link for the copy of this presentation. Um, I think I've received some emails requesting exhibits. Um, this presentation is considered uh, the exhibit for this uh, meeting. 
Um, this meeting is also being recorded. So a recording of this meeting um, will also be at this link along with the final CPP report uh, that will be submitted. So when you go to this link, um, this actually has several projects that the city uh, of Encinitas um, has issued public notices on and you will scroll down until you find the one that says Birmingham and then there will be links that will say something like um, recording of meeting, it'll say, uh, it'll have like a copy of the notice that you received and it'll also have a link for exhibits. Um, so now, <clears throat> As I stated um, at the start of this presentation, um, we'd like you to um, ask your questions, um, but again, keep it as general as possible. Um, it, we just don't have the time to go to a specific address. Um, we'd like to take those offline, and that's why I've got my contact information here. Um, I'd love to schedule a meeting with you and, you know, meet you on your, on your property, if that's, you know, that's what the desire is. Um, but if you can, um, again, put your questions in the, um, the Q&A feature, and we will go ahead and uh, start uh, answering some of those questions. Keep in mind, you can also ask me questions via email um, and I can respond to those as well. All right, so let's see here. Okay, I think we'll go, we can go ahead and start um, and start, start to answer the questions. Um, the first question is, what are the plans to make this route bike friendly? Um, currently, the plan is to um, include a designated bike lane, again, on the eastbound side. Um, the purpose of the eastbound side um, is because um, that is the uphill and um, rather than having cars queue behind bicyclists um, in a shared type of lane, um, the, the bike lane is uh, separated um, from the travel lane in this case. Um, and, uh, and that's what we're proposing on this project. All right. Okay. So there's another question. Um, what will happen to the personalized sidewalk squares we made on Birmingham? Uh, and as I mentioned, right now there the plan is to to demolish those, um, but we are still seeking input on. Um, if there is a desire to, to make a cast maybe of those, um, of certain squares in advance. Again, many are, um, are damaged. They, there are cracks. Some are very faded and uh, difficult to read. Um, but um, at, at this time, your, your, you know, your comments to how you want to preserve is something that the city would, would like. Roundabouts, uh, there's a question that says roundabouts seem to be problematic for smaller intersections uh, for both pedestrians and drivers not familiar with them. Can they be removed from the proposal? Um, uh, Josh, Josh Stone from Michael Baker. Uh, 
Uh, well, the purpose of the roundabout uh, is for traffic calming. It's one of the main benefits of it. And as far as um, drivers being able to maneuver around the roundabout, um, we've looked at um, how a fire truck would be able to um, go through the roundabout in all the combinations and different directions. And uh, we've gotten their input. So uh, the roundabout will have signs um, um, warning drivers that a roundabout is coming as you come down the hill. And then as you come up the hill, there'll also be a sign there. So they're, they're, they're meant for traffic calming and, um, and it is a, a, a safety measure, correct? Yeah, because right now um, the um, angle of the side street, Newcastle is kind of skewed. So if you're at Newcastle and you're making a left turn, to go towards the beach, um, it's just sight distance issues. It's hard to see a little bit. Right. So this roundabout will improve that. In terms of slowing the traffic. Okay. Um, there's a question, will this project encroach residents' property line or is it all going to be happening solely on the public right-of-way? Um, for the most part, all of the work is in the, um, the public right-of-way. There is no encroachment into uh, residents' property lines. Um, except I will state for, um, there's a, a property, a uh, couple of properties uh, and these are commercial properties. They're not residential properties um, where we are uh, minimizing easements um, that the city is uh, acquiring um, uh, for this project. And, and then, um, the project will encroach into the president uh, residents property line, but only um, for uh, when uh, SDG and E needs to um, install the service lines. Right now, are overhead, um, but um, for those for those residents that will be uh, converting to underground utilities. Um, work will be um, happening uh, within the property lines at that point. Um, but again, it will be just solely for uh, the service connections for sdg &E. uh, There is a comment that a shared by Carlene East uphill uh, does not seem safe. Can this be removed from the proposal? So the, pro the, the project doesn't have um, a shared bike in car lane. Um, we do have a designated bike lane um, and that will allow cars to um, go past the, the bicyclists um, um, and overtake the bicyclists um, uh, going uphill. Uh, what is a rain garden? <laughs> Josh, you want to get that one? Yeah, in general, I would just say it's a water quality feature. Um, the water coming down Birmingham will go, there'll be cuts in the curb and the water, will, some of the water will go in to this um, uh, material that will help treat the water. And then when that um, uh, overflows, it'll come back out into the street. So. It, it's a feature that just that treats some of the water. They're somewhat conventional in San Diego County. So it'll yes. kind of look like, um, yeah, I mean, you'll just see these curb cuts maybe about a foot or 18 inches wide where the water will just go in and then come back out. Okay. Um. The next comment says, uh, concerned about additional light pollution. How tall are the street lights? 
how many additional lights um, versus today and how much brighter will they be? Can you point us to the lighting designs? Hmm. Um, we have our lighting consultant on this call, but uh, we can. Well, I know uh, the height of the street lights um, with the lighting feature, they're about 16 and a half feet high. Okay. Um, as far as how many, I, I don't recall. Um, I want to say they're about 18. Uh, as far as more light or less light relative to the previous um, design or the existing condition today, um, I'd have to look up. I'd have to look that up and get back to you. Generally, we're playing okay. lights at each intersection. Okay. Um, so that, that question is from Robert. Robert, if, um, if you could um, please uh, shoot me an email or send me, uh, send me a, uh, uh, or, or call me. Um, and then we can respond uh, to this question directly to you. Uh, uh, the next comment is yes, please preserve the existing sign. No need for mosaic sign. All right, thank you for that comment. Uh, can the panels be installed into the new sidewalk? So again, the panels as, as they currently exist are in various conditions. Um, it will be very difficult for a contractor to, to preserve those panels um, um, and not break them. I think that will be a, a really big constraint and challenge for the contractor. Um, um, putting it, putting them into the new sidewalk, um, you know, right now we are trying to, uh, comply with Americans, um, with Disabilities Act, um, and, um, installing them into the new sidewalk, uh, will not, that, um, with that law. So right now, uh, the project will be, um, installing new sidewalk, um, and um, and we are looking for uh, additional suggestions on on how to address uh, the panels at this at this time. So thank you for that question. Uh, will you offer the opportunity to create new panels in the New sidewalk, opting them off to help raise funds for this project and let people immortalize themselves in Cardiff. Huh. Um, that is a, a good question. Um, uh, we have not really, uh, I don't know if uh, Josh, has that been considered previously? Um, I don't recall ever, ever hearing someone ask that question. Um, okay. I don't think we've really thought about that. Okay. 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 I think we should look at, and um, we will explore that as a as a possibility for this project. So thank you. Or could they? Or could they be placed on the rail trail? Um, so. Again, it's 200 panels. Um, it is a long distance. Um, I can explore that. That often really neat idea. And um, I'll have to check with our uh, parks folks to see if that's something that can be accommodated um, as well as maintained. Um, but again, the, the, the biggest problem that um, we foresee is the removal of those panels. And there's just no way to ensure that those panels won't break um, during that removal process. So, um, but, but we do update all, all that's exactly what we were looking for.
Um, hmm. So who would make casts of the sidewalk panels? Um, on that question, um, that really hasn't been thought through at this time. Um, I would say those individuals who, who would like to make the cast, they would make the cast. Um, I think he would do. Again, we've got a really tight project budget. Um, and so, yes, it would be something that the, 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 um, the community would, would, would participate in, in doing themselves. Uh, the next question, SDG &E is a fund for underground utilities created from rate payers over the years. How much, if any, uh, uh, is passed from? Um, Julie, I can take this one. This is okay. Kate Laredo with SDG &E. Um, So this is a 20B project it's called, which is uh, initiated and funded through the municipality. Um, the rates that, or the uh, fund that you're talking about is a 20A, and this is too large of a project typically to work within the funding that's allowed for the 20A project. There's some more restrictions on that. If you're interested in specifics, I can give my contact information and, and we can talk as well. Okay. All right. The next question, how far in from Birmingham will the utility lines be placed underground from the connector streets? I've got that one too, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the new utility lines will be within the public right of way. They will be either underneath the street itself or the sidewalk, but they won't actually encroach into private property other than the service lines, as Julie referenced. Right. Okay. The next question, how many easements are required for the roundabout? Um, right now there's just one. Um, the other easement that we are looking for is more toward the, the Jack in the Box. And it's mainly because their driveway um, currently is not ADA compliant. And um, this project uh, is, uh, is basically um, rec rectifying that. Um, and uh, as part of that, uh, we will need to acquire a very, like a sliver of an easement um, um, across their driveway. Uh, how do we request copies of the plans? So at this time, um, so they're about 95% uh, complete. Um, I hesitate. Uh, issuing the plans only mainly because um, if contractors start to get a hold of them, you know, they'll, they'll have an advantage over other contractors once we do go out to bid. Um, so if there's a specific address that, uh, that you would like to see uh, with regards to the plans, um, that is something that you can email me about and um, I can walk you through uh, the different notes that are on the plan and I can even send you like a screenshot of what the, the plans look like um, at a specific address um, that has worked in the past um, and if there's other details that you're looking for like the rain gardens and um, you know the storm drains certainly I can also provide those those type of details um, Okay, where will the westbound bikes ride? So the current show westbound um, bicyclists sharing the road um, with the vehicles in, in, in a 14 foot uh, travel lane. Do any of these changes get impacted 
by the I-5 intersection updates. Uh, we have been coordinating with Caltrans with regards to the, um, the bike trail that is, is um, posed. Um, Joshua, correct me if I'm wrong, but our, our plans basically will connect to that. Yeah, the class one bike path that Caltrans will be putting in um, will come to a T at Birmingham. So you'd be on the southwest corner of the I-5 Birmingham interchange, um, kind of by the gas station. Uh, so yes, then yes. Bikes, bikes will come up that hill and then they can either go east and then continue on to another class one bike path, I believe so, just uh, east of the freeway, or they would have to like legally dismount their bike and then walk through the gas station um, sidewalk area and then cross the street to go down the hill towards the beach or westbound. That's, yeah, that's what we've been coordinating, so. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> uh, the next question is, how do we keep the Cardiff sign with fresh paint? So, the proposed uh, the proposal uh, for this project is to to relocate the sign. The sign is currently on private property, and if we were to maintain it at its location, we'd actually have to to move it as where it is right now because currently um, it is in conflict with um, pedestrian ramps. Uh, that are uh, slated to be installed um, at the location of the sign. So we uh, uh, to accommodate, again, this is an Americans with Disabilities Act a requirement to install um, uh, ped ramps at that location. Um, and um, to, um, to avoid having to obtain an easement for the sign uh, on, um, on private property, the city is proposing to move it to a location further to the east um, and it would be on city property with the need of um, uh, obtaining an easement. Um, and again, and, and that's in the interest of um, preserving funds um, for the project budget. The next question is, are there any retaining walls along Birmingham proposed as part of the project? I believe, what was the number that we have on this, Josh? I was just looking at that up. Um, we have five retaining walls. Um, so just to kind of give a little background, the existing road curb to curb is about 30 feet. So in general, we're keeping the same curb alignment as it is. So to put in the retaining walls, those are necessary so we can put in the sidewalk. So it's not to, to widen the road. So we have about five of them. Um, their length is an average of maybe 50 to 70 feet long. And typically they're about two or three feet high. So they're not gigantic retaining walls. And within the city's right of way, none of them are yes. um, proposed on public, uh, on private property. Correct. Okay. Uh, question is how many new poles is SDG &E going to be going to have to add on the cross streets for structural support after the Birmingham poles are removed? Hey, Julie, this is Kate again with SDG &E. Uh, we actually just re-reviewed our design and okay. we worked really closely with the city's engineers on their plans um, and we're able to limit it. We only actually have two additional poles the entire length of the project that will be placed with again within the public right of way. Great. And we'll be removing quite a few more than that. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> All right, the next question is, how often is Birmingham expected to be closed for construction? 
question. I think this is more of a, a phase phasing type of question, Josh. Yeah, um, we'll be working with the city traffic engineer uh, to develop a traffic control concept. Um, uh, first, there will be the undergrounding of the SDG line and removal of the poles. And then, like Julie mentioned earlier, there will be uh, two major underground lines. There'll be the reclaimed water and the storm drain kind of down at the bottom of the hill. So those two utilities will be installed. Um, not sure if we'll have to shut down Birmingham uh, totally. Um, we'll probably probably would be able to allow traffic in one direction, I would think. Uh, there might be options for, for night work or um, just different things we have to come up with to try and minimize disruptions to people um, that drive up and down Birmingham. So I guess the answer is we're working on the traffic control plans right now. And um, we're, just, we're basically just going to try and um, do the best we can to minimize impacts. So. I think the assumed okay. duration of construction was, I think we said, was it a year and a half, roughly, on your schedule? Yes. Yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, the next question, oh, it says, please provide the link to us without expecting us to write that down. Um, I'm not sure how I will be able to provide the link to everyone. Um, let's see here. Can you cut and paste it into an answer? I'm trying to think what's the question. I can maybe at the end. Pardon me? Yeah, the question is pre please provide the link. And I'm assuming the link is the project link. Um, oh, there was a way that I could demonstrate how to use uh, the, the city's website. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try uh, once we get through these. Uh, these slides. Um, hopefully I can demonstrate um, how to actually get to this uh, public notices link. You can also in the um, search function of the city's website, type the, the word, uh, the two words public notices. And as part of that um, search, you will see um, one of the uh, one of the responses to the search will say development and that's one of the the ways that you can actually access the public notices um, and avoid this having to use this link and then if you scroll down towards the bottom uh, you'll see the project birmingham drive so again that's that's the main link for all of the um the projects that the city has issued uh, public notices on um, I've got a comment, uh, Cardiff 101 design review committee, uh, the pro proposed monument signage design and locations. Wonderful. Thank you for that. We will go ahead and forward you that information. Uh, next question, was the 2017 workshop held at Cardiff School if not, where was it? Also, how many attended that workshop? Ooh. I was not on the project team at that time. Uh, Jeff or Josh, do you have any recollection? I believe it was at the Cardiff Elementary School. Is that yeah, correct? It was at the Cardiff Elementary School off of San Alijo, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. They're probably. We have everything documented. Um, I want to say maybe 60 or 70 people. Attended. Yeah. OK. Uh, the next question. The roundabout happens on the alert road Birmingham to calm traffic. Ask anyone who lives adjacent to Birmingham. 
The busy traffic noise has made living near this road miserable. More traffic calming needed at least halfway down the hill. Okay. Thank you for that comment. We will definitely take that into consideration. Uh, please describe crosswalks. The one at Panther Avenue feels unsafe. So I, um, Josh or Jeff, is that something you can can do? Uh, well, our crosswalks are just striped traditional crosswalks. Um, I believe the one at Manchester, is that the one that's raised? So it's kind uh, of no, this is, this is Jeff. Uh, there, <clears throat> uh, there's no raised crosswalks proposed on the project due to the existing grade of the road. However, the existing crosswalks will be restriped with a high visibility thermoplastic paint, as well as the uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons located at each crosswalk. The, uh, yeah, the yellow flashing lights will be will be maintained as well as the high visibility striping and uh, advanced warning signage. So those crosswalks will be uh, per standard and high, high visibility. Right. Thank you. Uh, next, what happened to the roundabout on top of Birmingham? Hmm. I don't have the history on that. I don't recall anyone... the history of that one either. Okay. That might have been tossed around as an idea when we're starting, but I do not remember that. Yeah, that okay. may have been uh, very early in the project. I believe a roundabout was uh, looked at at the intersection of Glasgow to improve that intersection, but that was deemed infeasible at the very beginning of the project due to access concerns. Okay. <clears throat> uh, next question. What other options other than a roundabout are available for the Newcastle intersection? Uh, were there any other options that were evaluated as part of the, the design early on? I think we may have talked about a uh, three or four-way stop or I guess three-way stop but I think that was ruled out pretty early just because when you're coming down the hill, just always having to come to a complete stop would um, impact traffic. And then again, you still have that skew of Newcastle. I mean, it's, it's just really hard to see when you come out of there. So just putting a stop sign wouldn't have helped as much was our thought. Okay. All right, next question. How will the traffic of heavy trucks be handled in the future? There are also a number of loud bikes and cars that drive at high speed. How to design calm the traffic speeds and noise? Um, well, I mean, right off the bat, the, 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 lane, the lanes are, are narrowed. Um, and especially at the, the roundabout, um, you've got much more narrowing of the roads, which will cause folks to, uh, to slow down. Um, can you think of anything else there, Josh? Uh, the, we're, not, um, we're not increasing any of the speeds, the speed limits. Um, I don't think we're changing the speed limits. Um, yeah, Julie, if I could, if I could jump in. Um, as sure. far as the traffic calming question, uh, we will be adjusting the lane widths. So um, essentially, it's a striping improvement that provides some level of traffic calming through the new bike lanes and the shared lane moving down the hill. Um, and then the roundabout itself is designed as a traffic calming feature for that intersection. Um, as far as the traffic of heavy trucks, and I believe this question was asked later, but yes, there is a, um, a weight limit sign entering the road for, for the heavy trucks, but the pavement that will be designed at the new roundabout will be in accordance with the classification of the road and the amount of traffic that's expected on that road. So that answers the uh, heavy trucks question. 
the question. Okay. Um, if a house on Cambridge is being built and the utilities are being undergrounded in the alley just off Birmingham between Edinburgh and Cambridge, will the utilities on Birmingham be undergrounded at the same time? Hey, Julie, this is Kate again. Um, sure. It sounds like it's it's a mix between the city's 20B project that we are all talking about and a new business question. So I think um, we will need to get a little more information from this person. I will go ahead and put my email address out there. Um, and again, if you want to just contact me separately to discuss in more detail. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Next question. Uh, what streets will take the brunt of detour traffic during construction? Yeah, that question, um, similar to a previous one, uh, we're working on the traffic flow right now and that will be evaluated. Yes, so at this time we don't really know um, but we are working on 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 evaluating the streets for the for that purpose. Uh, next question: Why not use all native plants? Uh, there could be additional funding for all all natives. Can I jump in on. Hi, this is Mike Peltz. I'm the landscape architect on the project, and. That's a great suggestion and one that the city has taken um, to heart in more recent years, really in more recent months. And so that's something that we would love to, to be able to address and plan to take a look at before the project goes out to bid. All right, thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Mike the maker, the mosaic artist is local. Is that? <laughs> I guess, uh, Mike, is that another, another well, option I, that we should be? Yeah, let me just jump in and say that I think that's another great idea. And I think all of us would love to see a local artist do this sign if the sign is what eventually is built. Um, the trying to put that into the drawing set as, as a requirement maybe prove a little bit difficult in that it's it's an open and fair bid to anyone who wants to submit a uh, bid but i th i would love to see it personally i think everybody on the panel would support that idea so let us get our heads together and try and figure out a way to to make that happen i think that's what should be done absolutely i agree <clears throat> uh, what can be done as well from the city side, uh, what our options are. <clears throat> uh, the next question is, please provide more detail on the bike lanes. Um, is that something that the team can answer? Uh, we can provide that detail. Um, that's on our plans. It's a standard um, detail with a person on a bike and an arrow, like you see anywhere. Right. So we'll have the standard markings for a designated bike lane. Um, we'll have the green, the green paint. Um, basically, everything that 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 is required um, um, by our, our 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 traffic 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 team has been incorporated um, into the into the design for the traffic lanes. Yeah, just on the width of that, it's a, it's a dedicated six foot bike lane going up the hill and then a 14 foot shared facility going down the hill. Okay. Um, the next question, the property owners adjacent to the roundabout object to the design and want the city to consider an enhanced T intersection. I submitted a concept to you. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. McCabe. Um, 
that is something um, that we will certainly evaluate at that location um, and, and consider for the design for this project. Uh, I'm in favor of the new Cardiff sign and its new location at the fire station. Thank you very much for that comment. Uh, do I contact you for information on preservation of the panels on Birmingham? Uh, yes, if um, if you have ideas on preservation that are um, going to be within our budget and um, you know not too costly and um, and you know we'll we'll take into consideration the fact that they will there will be some damage um, to the existing panels as part of the preservation. Yes, please, please call me. <clears throat> uh, this one is for Kate Laredo. <laughs> um, I think Julie. I was just gonna say, I think um, that there's somebody who's upset about the formatting of the questions and that they, they can't be seen by all of the attendees. Um, I don't think that's, that's, um, I think that is the webinar feature and that's not something that I, I can change at this time. Um, we'll have, um, again, this is recorded and at the end of this meeting, all of the questions will be compiled as well as the answers and um, all of that will be published. Um, on the city's website. So there is, um, you know, folks will be able to see the comments, uh, the questions, as well as the comments, uh, the responses and the comments, I should say, because they're not all questions. Um, um, and those are the for everyone to see. And, um, you know, and we, we encourage um, those of you um, who, who may not be, um, viewing this at this time to, I, like I said, uh, please contact me with your questions. Um, I will uh, include as many uh, questions and, and emails that I'm that I receive um, as part of the uh, publication uh, for the CPP meeting, especially if I've had um, based on on the presentation that uh, that they received and and this um, and this this session <clears throat> we have a comment says looks great thanks so much thank you for that uh, there's a question will the tree in the middle of the roundabout be very small so that the view corridor is preserved this is mike peltz again the landscape architect um, the tree that we've got on the plans right now is a medium-sized tree, I'd say, versus a small tree. The purpose of the tree in the center, for everybody to know, um, Encinitas typically has a tree or trees in the center of all of the roundabouts. If you look at Santa Fe and Lucadia, um, there are trees in those roundabouts, and the purpose is to notify or signal oncoming traffic that there's an interruption in the drive straight through kind of intersection to help slow traffic down. So we have to walk that fine balance between um, getting something large enough that people are gonna see coming from either direction uh, at the roundabout and yet not big enough that it's gonna get in the way of anybody's view. Um, so happy to take a look at that. We can kind of um, analyze uh, if anybody's view might be blocked and, and where that might be coming from. So if you have a specific concern or you have a house that uh, you're worried about your view, please contact Julie. And then I think the design team would be happy to come out and take a look and try and assess what type of trees um, we might use to avoid uh, causing a problem for your view. Hope that made sense. 
All right, thank you, Mike. Um, the next question, did you consider a roundabout at Birmingham and McKinnon Avenue? Josh, do you recall if that was considered um, early on? Yeah, it may have been discussed way back um, at the beginning of the project, but it was just, that option was just not, we didn't move forward with that, whatever reason, in 2017. It seems like if, if, if one were to be put there, there would be some significant um, um, conflicts with, with properties and, and things right. like that. Um, okay, so the next uh, question, this is a major thoroughfare. This is a comment uh, to thousands of people. Tonight's meeting is simply inadequate. Please schedule an in-person CPP. Um, we do understand that um, um, having this format, this webinar format is um, not, um, you know, the, the, the desire obviously, um, and city staff, myself, we, you know, we would love to have more of an in-person type of meeting, but unfortunately, um, you know, with state requirements, um, and as those are loosened, there could be potential for, for an in-person CPP, but um, because our schedule uh, at the moment is to move forward with the completion of the design and, um, and uh, planning commission approval in May, um, it was critical that we have this meeting um, as soon as possible. Um, because it's been such a long time since we had the previous CPP. Um, and this, um, again, was to get to gain import, uh, to gain input, uh, to gain uh, support and understand what concerns the community have. And, and at this time, this was uh, the best solution, um, um, again, for this, for this uh, particular project. Uh, can you make new most people would pay for this opportunity um uh, thank you for that that is definitely an idea and uh, we will look into um, um how the city could possibly coordinate um something like that for this um, for this project will the traffic lights at mckinnon and san alejo be fixed so that they respond to bikes mm -hmm. Yeah, question for exactly. Jeff, maybe. All right. So to answer, yeah, so to answer the question, the traffic signal is currently set up on a set time to where westbound traffic um, is detected at the fire station driveway and they get the entire through movement uh, for the westbound movement and that would include bikes. Um, there are sensitive loops at the at the limit line to detect bikes, and then um, going up the hill. Yes, there would be the expectation that there would be um, loops in the bike lane. Okay. Uh, the next question: Are there any improvement plans for Mozart Avenue um, as it is in the boundary of the project? I don't recall any specific plans other than the, the installation of the reclaimed water line. Uh, That's correct. Okay. The only reason why the project extends, um, I guess, north of Mozart is to tie in the reclaimed water line. Okay. But there are no other events at this time for Mozart um comment please don't minimize the walk of fame squares that could be an entire separate cpp meeting in person no absolutely that that certainly is not my intent to minimize uh, the walk of fame squares um having it as a separate slide actually um, was my intent to bring that and um, bring that up and call it to to the attention of the community and um, as it is, we are seeking input as to how to 
to have the, the Williams Squares. And, and we understand it's a historical importance to the community. Um, and yes, um, almost a separate task force could be, could actually be created just, um, you know, to talk about um, how to handle that. So thank you for that comment. And just to um, add to that answer, um, we do have a report, I think Julie mentioned that before, that catalogs the 200 uh, different panels. So it's kind of a numbering system. And I believe that was on the city's website at one point uh, for the public to look at so they could identify which ones um, they were interested, any person was interested in. So. Okay. Uh, the next comment says, yes, I second the call for California native plants. Thank you very much for that comment. And as, um, as our landscape uh, architect stated, we will definitely um, look into um, more native, native plants. Uh, the next, this interested in the panel. So please keep that dialogue open and help partner with the community to develop the solution for preservation and relocations. Absolutely, we will, um, we will be making sure that, um, you know, folks who do contact me with ideas, um, you know, we will definitely explore the options um, as much as we can. Um, and, and hopefully the, the community will, there will be a consensus as to um, how to address the panels um, uh, as this project moves forward. Um, has anyone studied how much the sidewalk is used and do we really need a second one? Um, again, this, this is a, a mobility project. So the sidewalk being uh, added on the uh, the north side um, is is to encourage um, mobility um, um, for folks to to um, you know to all, all sorts of um, you know pedestrians and, um, and and just to encourage the connection. Um, to, to all parts of, of Cardiff that, that are located on Birmingham Drive. So um, sidewalks uh, that is on the east side, uh, uh, south side, I should say, uh, are narrow. And by, um, by creating uh, ADA compliant sidewalks on both sides, we'll be encouraging um, use of those sidewalks and um, um, Increasing the the mobility along that the Birmingham corridor. Uh, can we see the complete design with streetlights and landscaping? Will the crosswalks be in the same place that they are now? Uh, will there be any stop signs at the crosswalks, or just the same flashing lights that are there now? Right. I believe the crosswalks are in the same location. Um, is that correct? Uh, yes, the existing crosswalks at Manchester and Montgomery will be in the same location, um, along with the additional crosswalks at the round. There's no, and then we're not adding any um, stop signs. Is that correct? Correct. So the, the crosswalks will be high visibility thermoplastic with advanced signage and the rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Um, yeah, the, the stop signs at the crosswalk would um, would become a major impact to traffic moving up and down the, the street. And so that was not considered at, at those locations. Okay. So then design with street lights and landscaping. Um, again, we're working towards the completion of uh, the design at this time. And um, if I, if you know, if I'm, 
the plans are, I'm gonna say, say over 60 sheets long. Um, the the number of sheets, so it's it are, it is quite a large file, um, but certainly if you are interested in this, of what the street looks like, uh, street lights look like, um, you can email me for something like that, as well as the landscaping. We do have uh, details of the, the rain gardens. Um, we do also have landscaping sheets, which identifies uh, the different trees and shrubs and, 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 and plants and where they're gonna be located. Um, so certainly email me and if you'd like a, a copy of, of those particular street uh, sheets, I can send those to you. Uh, the next question, please try your very best to save this precious piece of history. Um, I am is with regards to the sidewalk panels. And certainly uh, that is our intent as part of this project. Um, the next comment says the roundabout has only two crosswalks and is more dangerous to pedestrians. Um, is that correct? I thought there yeah. are three crosswalks. On that one, I'm looking at the plan. Um, we were not able to put a crosswalk on the north leg or uphill of the roundabout due to a uh, driveway. It's, it was, it's the driveway into that business. It was an old dance studio. I don't know what it is now, but it's that area. Okay. So we, we were not able to, okay. All right. So, um, you know, uh, Again, you know, the, the, the roundabout um, is meant traffic as part of slowing the traffic down. Um, it actually will be safer for pedestrians to cross as the traffic is slowed down. Again, it's a traffic calming feature and, um, and um, uh, you know, as, as cars are slowing and approaching the traffic, uh, the traffic roundabout, that's, um, that will give pedestrians um, opportunities to cross and, um, and the vehicles using the, the roundabout will, will see the pedestrians much, much more easily. Yeah, and just Julie to add to that, the, uh, all the crosswalks located at the roundabout Again, as they do at Montgomery and Manchester, we'll have the high visibility crosswalks with the appropriate um, advanced signage to warn motorists there is pedestrians in the area. And this was all designed within the state guidelines for pedestrian facilities at the roundabout. Great, thank you. Mm. All right, the next question, can the corner radar at the cross streets be reduced so the pedestrian crossing distance is shortened? Hmm. Well, for the most part, a lot of the radii are um, 10 or 15 feet already. They're, pre they're pretty small because we're kind of mimicking what's out there. Uh, if you were to put a larger radii, you would encroach into private property. And if you go smaller, it'd be harder for some vehicles to make that turn. So I, th I think we generally tried to keep them uh, similar to how they are today. Okay. <clears throat> but thank you for that question. Um, <clears throat> The next question, what if most Cardiff residents don't want a roundabout? From recollection, there has been no accidents there. Is that accurate? Um, I don't recall any access at that location. Um, 
but again, it, you know, it, it's, it, it's an effort um, to calm the traffic is uh, to calm, calm the traffic and um, um, slow speeds at that location. Um, as our designers indicated, there is also a, a safety measure um, with regards to um, site visibility um, that, a tr that a roundabout actually addresses um, um, in lieu of what exists at this time. Um, and um, uh, I know that accident is always a precursor for for roundabouts, um, but um, but there are still uh, you know speed studies and things like that um, that warrant uh, a roundabout. And I believe that in this case we had studies that uh, warranted the the roundabout. Uh, next question: In November 2017, CPP. The design showed how each home on Birmingham was going to be affected. Has the design changed? Um, I think in some locations, uh, we may uh, we may have changed um, some of the sidewalks from. Uh, was it non-contiguous to contiguous? And again, um, when we say uh, contiguous, we mean that it, it's adjacent to the to the travel uh, travel way instead of having like a a rain garden or a parkway. Um, the road and, and that was done mainly because again we are. Um, working around encroachments that may have been built since that previous CPP. Um, and, um, and folks may have, you know, done some landscaping modifications, um, you know, added hardscaping, things like that. So there have been some minor changes um, to the, to the, to the sidewalks. Uh, it's very minor. Do you recall, Josh, if anything else has changed in the design since since the 2017 uh, CPP? Uh, we made some very minor changes to the roundabout. Um, the islands were slightly adjusted um, upon talking with the um, owner of the, the previous New Balance site. Um, the drainage was pretty much the same. The reclaimed water is the same. Uh, we made some minor changes, like you said, to the curb and sidewalk areas where um, I know some trees were removed in a couple, couple spots, and uh, and then of course we have the sdg &E design um, now, and we did not have that final design in 2017. So there's been all kinds of very minor um, changes, nothing major I can think of though. All right, <clears throat> the next question or comment: In 2017, I spoke to city staff regarding the sidewalk panels. Uh, they were very clear that they saw the value in saving the panels. Uh, taking them in the community park or along the coastal rail trail. It is not clear what has now changed uh, in the city's view. Um, so the response to this comment is, um, is that I, if, when I look back at the notes from that meeting, um, it seemed like there, you know, there may have been very few um, comments, and it didn't seem like there was a, a, a large consensus. Is what I uh, we've heard thing where um, more uh, community and, and residents expressed interest. I think it was just just a handful. Um, but now that we're you know bringing this up again, and we see that there's definitely more interest. Um, um, those are some good ideas um, that we will, you know, continue to evaluate um, as far as relocation, and um, and again, you know, that's um, 
that's kind of how that this this project has evolved um, and and it's really important that we get this type of um, feedback again and, and it 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 allows us to 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 um, to go further into the design and, and look at um, other options. So thank you for that comment. Um, let's see here. There is no bikeway proposed on the south side of Birmingham between San Alejo Avenue and Newcastle. Right now, the la that lane is 22 feet wide with no parking. It seems like there is enough room for a bike lane. Why would there be for this section? I think we've there is parking at that location. Is that correct? Yeah, that that cross section on the south side of Birmingham, so the uh, the eastbound lane, um, parking was was proposed there to be in accordance with the um, the Carter specific plan or as close as possible. And so there is parking proposed in that area. Um, however, we do have a bike ramp proposed in the eastbound direction. So cyclists not wanting to navigate the roundabout in that direction. Again, the uphill direction have the option to use that ramp and use the sidewalk. Um, or for cyclists wanting to navigate the roundabout um, as a motorist would have the option to do that as well. And the distance between San Alijo and that bike ramp is about hundred feet. So a short enough area to, and there it's very low speeds. It's the T intersection, and so uh, we installed parking there in lieu of bike lane, according to that specific plan. So the plan is have a shared um, travel way at that point. Correct. So it'd be a shared condition for the first 100 feet of the road. And then cyclists have the option to use the sidewalk, um, which they have in the in the westbound direction as well. But they would utilize a driveway instead of a dedicated bike ramp um, or navigate the roundabout as a motorist would. OK. Uh, next comment, the call should be able to see the other questions. Um, you must repeat this meeting and make it open to all. Um, okay, I think again, I think that's the limitation of the webinar, webinar format. Um, but um, if, if there is a desire to repeat this meeting, then um, that's something we will look at. Uh, um, a long one. What was the, the decision made to install a 10 foot travel lane and a six foot bike lane uphill and a 14 foot drive lane with Sharrow's downhill instead of two 10 foot travel lanes and two five foot bike lanes downhill? It looks like there is enough space along areas without center turn lanes to have a bike lane downhill as well as uphill. Additionally, the landscaping and or bioretention basins could be narrow. Freeway lanes are 12 feet wide and I am concerned that a wide 14 foot lane will just encourage speeding downhill. This is not in line in, in line of the project goal of traffic calming and safety. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Josh or Jeff, is that something that um, we've evaluated during the, the design early on? Yeah, so when, when we were looking at the cross section of this, um, as, the, the speed of the anticipated speed of the bicyclists was kind of what we were taking into account here um, while keeping the existing width of the road. Um, so I'll uh, talk about this first uh, comment here for the 10 foot travel lanes. So with the existing grade of the road, um, we would really, we wouldn't want 10 foot lanes right next to each other separated by a double yellow center line. 
uh, typically will put in 10 foot lanes where you have multiple lanes of travel in one direction. Um, so this would be pretty tight going, going next to each other at the grade of the road. Um, so the, the six foot bike lane uphill um, was just so that um, people riding their bikes uphill uh, wouldn't be conflicting with motorists going uphill as there's a very large differential in speed while the 14 foot share lane um, was meant to be a shared facility between bikes and cars. And um, I just want to point out the existing lane widths are 15 feet, so with no, no bike facilities. So while we are, you know, narrowing that slightly, um, it is still meant to be a shared facility. Um, and then to down to the next point um, for the bioretention basins. So due to the right of way width, um, the bioretention basins and rain gardens, if they're narrowed any more than we currently have them, they really lose their effectiveness. Um, right now, they're probably at the minimum width they could be while being worthwhile putting them in. So narrowing them uh, wasn't an alternative that we, we looked at. Um, and again, we did want to maintain the existing width of the road. So that's the background of that cross-section proposal. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, the next comment. The sidewalk can be done. We need to preserve the history of Cardiff and Encinitas. Thank you for that comment. And we will definitely um, uh, evaluate uh, as much as possible. Uh, OK. My voice keeps cutting out. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, let's see if I can stop my video and maybe that will help. <clears throat> uh, the next question, do you have proper engineering drawings showing a lot more detail? Um, what was shown to really see what is happening? Uh, if so, can detailed drawings be placed on the city's website? Um, again, um, it is a very large file. And if there's a specific um, detail that you're looking for, um, please email me and, um, and I can locate those and, and forward those to you. Um, So the next question is related to Josh. Josh is, um, says, who is Josh? Was he introduced and is he a city employee? Uh, no, Josh Stone is um, uh, our design um, manager from Michael Baker International. And yes, he was introduced um, at the beginning when I introduced uh, each of the panel members. He is not a city employee. He's He's on contract with the city. Um, rain garden picker. Um, does anybody have a, a nice picture of what the rain garden uh, would look like? We'll, we'll come back to that one. I'll give you a little bit of time. Um, there is a comment, I like roundabouts. The one at Rubenstein and Santa Fe has been a big improvement, making it easier to navigate walking or by car. Great, thank you for that comment. Um, where is, is funding currently being sought? Sorry if I missed it earlier. Um, the funding for the design is, um, um, is is with our general fund and um, the design is fully funded. Um, for the construction phase portion of the project, um, that funding has not been secured. We are seeking uh, federal stimulus um, um, along with a few other uh, city projects um, to fund the construction phase for this project. <clears throat> All right, 
Josh, do you have what the um, rain gardens or Jeff look like? Um, we have that on our drawings. We could forward that to people. Um, and I was just looking that up on my phone. If you do a Google search for rain gardens, uh, maybe you have to specify for a roadway, but I think you can probably see some pictures of them also. Mm -hmm. So normally a rain garden is basically a of land that um, has plants, but it's also a, um, a storm water conveyance system at the same time. It acts as a storm water conveyance. Um, so it's, um, it's like a very shallow ditch um but it again it's got plants um and it allows most importantly it allows for infiltration of stormwater that enters through the, the curb cuts and it's it is um it is a common feature throughout uh the county of san diego um and it's 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 a it's a trigger, um, and um, which I I should have put that in the slide. Um, yeah, I found it. If you just go to do a Google search for rain gardens along roadways, uh, there's all kinds of pictures of them. Um, okay. You also see them sometimes in parking lots, like at the Vons and Twenty Four Hour Fitness on Santa Fe. There's some, so you'll see water go into them and then slowly percolate through them. So it kind of helps treat the water. Yep. All right, let's see. Uh, I like shared lane going downhill as opposed to a separate bike lane going downhill. Uh, bikes going downhill can pretty much keep up with cars. So a shared lane is no problem. Uh, I don't know what that stands for. <laughs> Um, on the other bike. hand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the other hand, a bike going that fast in the bike lane may not be seen by cross traffic, and they will also be subject to right hooks. Right hooks at speed will be deadly. Oh, um, well, thank you for um, that comment. Um, you know, that's, um, you know, as, as we install sidewalk and a rain garden on that um, side of the road, that side of the road or the, the westbound side, um, you know, we're hoping that, uh, that the bikes, bicyclists, you know, will, um, you know, you know, be looking at these types of features on the road, whereas right now they're really, it's just um, a curb. Um, and so, you know, they'll hopefully be paying more attention to, to the speed and the, and the traffic that are, that are around them. Um, does anybody else have anything there to add to All right. Uh, next question, how about installing the panels at a nearby park? Um, yes, that is uh, something that uh, we will be evaluating uh, as part of this, this project. Um, can the crosswalks at the roundabout be moved closer to the center of the roundabout and a crosswalk added east of the roundabout? Okay, so that one, um... For the roundabout standards, it's, de it's desirable to have a gap between where a car that's approaching the roundabout stops before they get into the roundabout and the crosswalk. You want to have a about a 20 foot gap in there so one car can basically get in between the crosswalk and the stop bar for the roundabout. So on the design, uh, we're able to achieve that on the uh, west and on Newcastle. And then like I mentioned before, on the north or uh, I guess east leg on Birmingham coming down the hill, 
um, there's that wide driveway, so we're not able to achieve that. All right. <clears throat> the next comments, uh, Cardiff 101 is working on options for preservation and relocation of the panels. We are happy to help with this project. Fantastic. That is exactly what we were hoping to hear <laughs> um, from this. <laughs> Um, thank you for that comment. We very much appreciate it. Um, the next comment, worrying about the contractor and whether or not he breaks history, meaning the panels should be an interest of the city. Absolutely. Um, that is something that um, we will you know, be looking into as far as um, methods um, that the contractor could possibly use, but um, I think it, it will still be difficult, um, but, um, you know, it, we will make every effort and, and see what's, what's the best um, method that currently exists um, to preserve those panels. Uh, the next question, can the sidewalk panels be spread out throughout the green area at the end of Birmingham? and at the train tracks. Maybe the old sign can be moved to that area too. Um, that This is another idea that uh, we appreciate and uh, we will evaluate if, um, if we can accommodate something like that. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, Cardiff 101 is interested in coordinating regarding the signs, the existing one and the new one. A follow-up meeting would be beneficial regarding the signage and the panels. Absolutely, that, um, that definitely makes sense um, based on the, the community input that we're receiving at this time. Um, that's something that we will um, definitely um, look at uh, arranging and uh, scheduling for everyone. Um, <clears throat> I heard utility poles will be buried underground <laughs> along Birmingham, but some will be replaced in front of homes. Is this correct? I, I don't think we're burying any poles please uh, state if you can confirm that's the case we're not burying poles yeah Julie I think that they're referring to just undergrounding the power lines which is what we'll okay. be doing um and I think their their comment that there will be some poles replaced in front of homes that's referring to our cable poles um which when you go from an underground line you then go up where the utility poles start going overhead again. And so again, to my earlier point, we'll only be adding two poles along the boundary of this district um, and everything else will be replaced. You know, there may be existing poles around the boundary that are replaced, but um, everything on Birmingham will be gone from view. All right, I hope that answers the, the question. <clears throat> Um, there has been a sign stating no trucks down Birmingham for decades, yet trucks drive down and up on a daily basis. If the goal is to make Birmingham safer to pedestrians and bikes, will the city enforce the no trucks? Um, uh, typically enforcement is handled by the sheriff's department, I believe. So for those of you who do, you know, see these trucks um, uh, on Birmingham, and if you think that they are um, not following the, the signage, um, that is something that uh, the sheriff's department would enforce. Um, I can look into what else can be done. Um, um, that at this time we aren't um, 
we are not making changes to the signs. Is that correct, Josh? We are um, maintaining that those signs. Yes, that's correct. For the for the truck truck weights, truck limits. Correct. Okay. We're not changing those at all. So the next question is how many Cardiff residents are in favor of a roundabout? Um, uh, I don't think we have that information. Um, I think on this one, You know, we're noting those in favor who have uh, made comments as part of this, um, this CPP, as well as um, the pre previous CPP meeting. Um, that's how we are obtaining um, the consensus. And again, it's a, it's a general consensus that um, it is being evaluated as part of these, these meetings. There is a comment to save the best ones for the rail trail, um, precious art installation. Um, I'm going to assume that's with regards to the panel. And, um, and yes, we, um, you know, that is a, a good idea and we will take that into consideration as well. Uh, perhaps we could hire a saw cutter and have residents who want to preserve their square pay for it um i'm trying to figure out if if that, if that is an option um we will we will add that to to the list of options um for the panels and um we'll work with uh cardiff 101 on on how we can um you know um look at as that as an option as well. Thank you for that uh, idea and that comment. All right, we are coming down to the last 10 minutes of this uh, meeting and I will continue on and get as many questions um, answered as possible. Um, how many residents prefer an intersection at Newcastle? Um, again, this isn't, um, it's hard for us to to um, to obtain that information, and we're looking for general comments from the community as to if they're in favor of of the the roundabout at at this time, or if if they've got um, um, other ideas. Why is the budget so tight? The council is considering borrowing. Uh, Forty-five million dollars for Lucadia. Um, I uh, I'm not sure ex exactly how to that. Um, the the budget, yeah. Again, the budget is is an estimate that we have at this time. Um, keep in mind that as this project has um, developed over the years that the budget has increased and it's um, a simple matter of, um, you know, the cost index uh, increasing um, for, for, for both materials and labor. And, um, um, and that's why you've, you may have seen the budget grow over the years. Um, I cannot speak for the city council as far as um, the borrowing of $45 million for Lucadia, but I can um, attempt to, um, you know, uh, um, provide more information on the budget. Uh, I think that is a good question. And um, I will try to uh, put together a response uh, to that question. Um, if you can email me that question, I, I'd appreciate it. Uh, please give more details on the pursuit of funding, funding considering 
the slides show that the funding appropriation and grant did not come through. Um, correct, we applied for an ATP grant um, last fall and uh, were informed just in the last, I'm gonna say last week or two, that we did not receive the, the ATP grant. Um, but there are other uh, funding um, opportunities uh, for the construction, as I mentioned. Um, the federal stimulus is um, what we are looking for, um, along with a, a couple of other city projects. Um, and um, at this time, that that is what we are um, pursuing in terms of um, funding for construction for this project. Uh, so happy to see this finally happening, especially underground utilities. We never biked down down Birmingham West because of the downhill speed and cars making it a safety hazard. Uh, you haven't really addressed this issue at all by having the bike lane going uphill only. Um, old sidewalk. It is about time this ugly art is removed and real sidewalks are installed. Trash it and put somewhere more appropriate like the park. All right, thank you for that comment. Um, where are all the bike ramp entrances and exits located at the roundabout? Can there be designed parallel to the roadway, similar to Jimmy Durante Boulevard and the San Diego Drive and San Diego Drive? Since these bike ramps are designed specifically for younger and less experienced bike riders, can the design be changed so the entrance exit ramps are parallel to the bike lane? Please see the roundabout bike ramp design at the intersection of Jimmy Durante Boulevard and San Diego Drive for a reference. Uh, yeah, I can answer that question, Julie. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, um, so the bike entrances and exits located at the roundabout. So there are bike ramps angled uh, 45 degrees for the path of travel. Um, for the eastbound direction. And that 45 degrees is so that, um, and that's guidance from the state, so that bicyclists don't come up on the sidewalk full speed where it's a shared facility with pedestrians. Um, so we wanna have that angle so bicyclists slow down before they get on the sidewalk. Um, in the westbound direction, if bicyclists want to use the sidewalk in lieu of navigating the roundabout as a motorist would, they would utilize the driveways um, immediately upstream and downstream of the roundabout. And again, those are not parallel to traffic, I mean, the driveway as um, ideally you want bicycles to slow down before entering a shared facility with pedestrians. Um, and uh, just the, right. another yeah. reason on that is we, um, have a, we have the wide sidewalks. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No. Oh. Uh, let's see here. So the next question, um, why a roundabout at Newcastle instead of a three-way stop sign? And again, that, that was evaluated uh, early on. Um, let's see here. Uh, there's another comment. I'm in favor of a roundabout car for that comment. Um, how flexible is the plan at this point? Is it set in stone or are changes still actually possible as opposed to the way Lucadia asked for another option as lip service and the council went with the prior ones anyways. Um, at this point, um, I would say that the major features of the project are fairly um, um, formed Formed at this point, we are looking at making modifications based on, on input that we have received. Um, um, but, uh, you know, we're trying to keep the modifications um, um, more on the minor side at, at this point. Um, but, you know, if there is something that uh, is a significant feature, such as the roundabout, you know, we, we can certainly reevaluate that. Um, 
but uh, we, we are again under a, a short time frame uh, to move this project forward and and to complete the design. Um, and so, if you know, we'll we'll we will be reviewing the notes um, from the past to see how we addressed um, these other options um, and how they were evaluated and if there is a need to go back and, and reevaluate. Um, there's a comment here, I believe the Friends of the Arts has raised funds to renovate the Cardiff sign. Um, okay, that is um, good information and I will look into um, what funds um, could potentially be available uh, for this project. All right, uh, we are at the eight o'clock hour. Um, and I think at this point, um, what we will do is, is um, um, is uh, for the remaining questions, these will be all documented um, and we will be putting together uh, responses um, again, for all of the questions and the comments that we received, and um, and these will be published. And I apologize if I wasn't able to uh, get to your question um, during the the two hours we had for this meeting. Uh, really effort to to try to speak as fast as I can, and maybe um, um, to try to get in as many questions as we, as as we can as part of this meeting. So um, um, we just wanna thank everybody for their participation and um, please continue to call and email me with questions that you may have um, that maybe were not um, answered uh, to your satisfaction as part of this meeting. And, um, and I will kind of have dialogues with those of you that have already started that process of um, contact me, contacting me. And, um, and um, I look forward to, to those of you who, are, who will be reaching out to me for the first time uh, for questions on um, the specific details that, um, that we're getting um, as part of this meeting. So, um, uh, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I hope you uh, have uh, a good evening. And, uh, and thank you very much for your interest and for your support of, of this project. And, uh, and we look forward to continuing um, on in, in this uh, coordination. Thank you.